um, it's very difficult, um, and this is something that I was playing with, uh, to develop a system that could, each, that could represent uh, each of your different organizations' interests in this process. Um, in no way could we have 14 or 15 or 20, or what number it is, media organizations individually represent themselves on this committee. It makes the committee way too unwieldy. Uh, so instead, we, we divided uh, the media organizations into four main categories, which would select um, a, a representative from the, that category. It's not a perfect system, um, but it's the best we can do um, to develop a finding. And uh, the way that we, we, we work with that imperfection is that we, again, stage those public hearings where every member of your media organization can be present to see what has the committee been discussing, and then you can get your input on it um, so the committee can work with that input. Um, we request uh, Dan Park uh, of Campus, Campus Council uh, to be an ex officio a non-voting member of the committee. Um, just because um, sometimes committees come up with ideas on funding processes um, that don't really work. Uh, so for example, um, when I sent out that all-campus email, I got a lot of emails back on ideas for what AS could use uh, to fund student media. One interesting idea I received in the mail today was, hey, why don't students just democratically vote what student media organizations they like to fund. <coughs> Isn't that a good idea? Isn't that a democratic process? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a democratic process, but it breaches the First Amendment rights of the media organizations. That's something that we could not do. Uh, there's court precedent on that. Um, you can't use a democratic process to defund a, a, a media organization um, just because, I mean, it, it has to do with protecting the, the, the free speech rights of, of minorities, and in that case, it would be the majority opinion controlling a minority's funding. Uh, so you can't do that, um, but that's one idea that the, this committee could have possibly come up with, and that's why it's important to have a campus council there to uh, make sure that we're, we're not moving ahead with suggestions that do indeed breach the First Amendment. Um, so again, um, we have a total of 13 voting members, 15 members. Um, the chair is also uh, a non-voting member. So that's the composition of the committee. Um, this is the process that we'd like to move forward on, but. Um, we're going to open it up to public input <coughs> at this point, and you can ask questions, you can make statements. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be in this room till, let's see, till about 9, maybe a little after 9 p.m. Um, so please do make your comments brief, uh, and uh, it, we'd like to hear what your suggestions are in regards to the committee's formation. Um, we'd like to hear your suggestions on the process, and we'd like to hear what you're thinking right now. Uh, now I'll hand it over to Katie. Uh, so just to kind of frame, I guess, where we're going to go at this point. Um, what I think I'm a little afraid and I kind of want to avoid happening right now is for there to be kind of a general discussion about whether or not you know, the freeze of funding is a matter of free speech or if it's not. We've spoken to legal counsel about this. It's absolutely affirmed that what we're doing is not unconstitutional in any way. If it was, I'd be the first one to make sure we undo it. So really, that whole discussion, if we want to have a philosophical discussion about whether or not that's a good idea, I mean, that's fine. But really, it's not its not unconstitutional, it's not illegal. Um, we're, we've spoken to individuals who, this is their profession, this is what they do, and we're sounding what we're doing right now. What we do want to talk about, what we really want to get out of this, at least what I want to get out of this, is hear about any, any maybe additional concerns that you might have about how we're going to be moving forward at this point, and any suggestions you might have. Maybe some things that you might, something we might not be thinking of, but you're thinking of about how we can really move forward together. Because honestly, this isn't about AS tech media organizations, and we're just gonna cut you all off and say goodbye and give a middle finger. <laughs> it's not what we're doing here. It's not in any way what we're doing. Um, if any of you all um, have attended any of the a lot of the events that have happened over the last week, you understand that it's becoming blatantly clear that a lot of institutions at UCSD have these fundamental structural inadequacies. And the AS is not exempt from that. And what we're doing is we're doing our part to fix our structural inadequacies so that we can continue to serve the students, but to do it in a way that really is not self-defeating of our own mission. So that's what we, I want all of you to, if you, if you have any ideas, if you have any concerns, please, please let us know. And, um, but again, really hesitate, I really want to knock into discussion of is it, uh, is it constitutional, unconstitutional to freeze funding for all media organizations? It's kind of it's kind of beyond that, I hope. If you still want to talk about that, I mean, hey, that's fine. I just hope it can be more constructive than that. That's all I'm saying. 
So like uh, Butsu said, my name is Katie Hall, and I'll be moderating our public input section. Just to lay some ground rules before we begin, um, as we do have around 40 minutes allotted for this, um, everyone will be allowed three minutes to speak. If you ask a question <coughs> to anyone up here on our panel, you will be allowed one follow-up question, or else you'll need to get on the list again to just make sure that everyone has time to speak. Um, please, no interruptions. Everyone will get on the list as time allows. Um, if you are unruly or are disruptive, I will be forced to ask you to leave. Um, so please just respect everyone, raise your hand. Um, I'll try to write down characteristics if I know you by name and your name. If there are multiple people that want to talk, just make sure I get you before you put your hand down and we'll try to go in order of the hands raised. Um, also, if you're in the back of the room, be aware it's a long room. We can't really hear you, so I advise you to speak loudly. Um, for that, we will get going. Someone like to raise their hands, and I'll drop them down, and we will get going. So, in the back. Um, I just had one question. Uh, how difficult is it to start a media organization on campus, such as a newspaper or a television show? How difficult? Yeah, like what's the process? Like, do we go through? Is it relatively easy? How do you find it? So, anyway, that's that. Basically, all you have to do is to start a video, right? All you have to do is go to CSI, register, and get approved. That takes about a week or two, and then after that, you're a video. As long as you have four principal members and a um, uh, constitution. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, um, back, in, back in 1995, uh, Voice Trump Data. Um, a newspaper here on campus called the deaths of Border Patrol agents, and yet the school then argued for protecting free speech, and so did AS. What has changed from now? What's changed in the last 15 years? And they didn't defund, you guys didn't fund them. Sure, I mean, again, sure, uh, I mean, it's. We weren't here then, basically. You know, we're here. <laughs> 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 Decisions are made by those who are living. And <laughs> 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 so, um, to follow up to that, the, you guys, the ish, they, what the school sta uh, stated, and also AS, is that they had the constitutional uh, legal <clears throat> rights to say that, and they wouldn't defund them. Uh, sure. OK, so I guess that, that kind of gets to your point a little yeah. bit more. Again, I really don't want to just get into an argument about whether or not it's constitutional. I'm telling you, we've spoken to individuals who do so this for a living. <laughs> Sorry, no interruptions, please. We've spoken to individuals who do this for a living. They get paid to do this, and they told us that freezing funding for all media organizations is not unconstitutional. So it's not really an issue of constitutional or not constitutional. At that time, when they said, when they said, oh, we can't do anything because we have this obligation, really, they, it was it was a cop out. What that was. Cop out to not do anything about it. We're not copying out. Um, I just wanted to say that we, the Mere Quarterly, um, first off, we stand in solidarity with the Black Student Union. We resent being lumped into a category with the koala. We would never say any of the things that they have said. Um, we believe that we've heard <laughs> talk that if you're just going to cut funding to all human organizations, we don't want to be lumped in a category with them. Um, and we're upset and we're hurt and stuff I applaud what you guys are doing as far as making sure this doesn't happen again and uh, correcting any problems that may exist in the charter. Um, but I'd like to hear what you guys think about doing as far as damage control, about the problems that actually occurred um, and the university's funding reputation in the media and on campus in general. Uh, that's what's really upsetting me. Um, I know that you guys can do the best you can to make sure this doesn't happen. And <coughs> here agrees that it shouldn't happen. Uh, but regarding the fact that it did happen, uh, what do you guys think about doing as far as controlling uh, the damage that has already been done? Uh, do you have any ideas for that? And you have in the works? So that's essentially my question. Sure. Um, so, uh, I think a lot of the recent events have essentially fractured um, segments of our student body um, on lines of what community you associate with, whether you're Greek or Sac or a minority. 